Welcome, ladies, to the Real Estate Investor Show, providing inspiration, strategies, and insight to empower women investors to live balanced and financially free lives. Now, here are your co-hosts, Liz and Andressa. So in today's episode, we have Sonia Macias. She is from Nebraska and she is a uh, buy and hold investor and has flipping experience. Um, so inspiring. Just, just an amazing story. Right, Andresa? She is. She's from Mexico. So she has this like power and like determination on her. I'm like, we need her on our team, man. She should be negotiating every contract that I have. But what I, what I really appreciated, we appreciated the interview, this just very real, real interview and authentic interview. Uh, she talked a lot about transitioning and pivoting. And we, we're hearing that everywhere. Um, women are flipping and now they really want to build that rental portfolio or they're like lease option experts. And now they're like, hold on, I'm not, I don't own anything. So this is crazy. So it, we're all, you know, a lot of us are pivoting. So she talked specifically how she was able to apply what she did know to, from flipping to, uh, you know, rentals and value add rentals, which, you know, they, you know, coined the, the burr strategy, but in essence, really value add rentals is the nutshell what that means. So she talks a little about that. And I really appreciated what she had to say on that topic. Yes. And she also was very open and vulnerable by sharing her personal experience. Uh, she had a business with her ex-husband and went through a divorce. So throughout that time, as other single moms out there that are used to, you know, help others and lead, leave themselves last on the to-do list, uh, she did realize that she needed to help herself first. So it's just a beautiful journey about realizing that you are the main person in your life and you need to take care of yourself first in order to take care of others. And it all come together with real estate because if you're not your best, you just can't do other partnerships and find the best deals and move forward with your um, business. So it has all to do with the real estate. You might not, you might think that I was like, wow, what's going on? But it has all to do with yourself. You are the main person in your life and putting yourself first is the best strategy that you can possibly make. Uh, so enjoy this episode. I hope you enjoy it as much as we did and send us a comment about what are your thoughts. Enjoy. Bye. Investors, as we all know, financing deals in today's market can be a bit challenging at times. If you're looking at funding your next real estate transaction, we are so excited to introduce to you Fund That Flip. Fund That Flip is a lending partner dedicated to grow your real estate investment portfolio. They specialize in fix and flip, buy and hold, new construction, and cash out refi for one to four units. Ladies, we have known the founder, Matt, and his team for many years now, and we can assure you that their support goes beyond just lending money. They become a true partner. So if you're looking for great terms and reliable service, check out fundaflip.com slash invest her. Welcome back, ladies. This is Liz. And this is Andressa. And we are back on the Real Estate Invest Her show. And we have Sonia on our show today, all the way from Nebraska. So welcome to our show. Thank you very much, ladies. Appreciate it. Yeah, Sonia is a new uh, real estate investor meetup leader and has recently launched her meetup in Nebraska, which we're really excited by. And she's just got an amazing story. We're going we're gonna to jump into here in a moment. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff to, to dive into with her. Um, before we go there, we always like to welcome all you amazing women that listen. We do know that some men listen too, so welcome yes. to you as well. But we are in the business of serving women to live a financially free and balanced life. So that's what we're up to. That's what our mission is. That's what Andres and I stay focused on. Um, every day that we are moving towards creating more financial freedom for women, ourselves, and all the women that are part of our community and worldwide. So pretty big mission, and that's what we're up to. So Andressa, what is up for you before we launch into Sonia's story and just get in, getting to know her a little more? What is what is up for you? How are things going? So we always talk about financial freedom, right? And sometimes that can be like a daunting and like yeah. big, 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 big word. 
Big, it is. Big two words, actually. <laughs> and that's what we picked for our mission. Good. <laughs> Good. We like big things, right? We, we go after really lofty. We should read our goal set for the year. It's like, whoa, if we, get all, if we achieve all this, it's pretty neat. It would, right? I looked at our list and I was like, damn, I hope you very cool, right? That's Absolutely. where we're aiming for. So talking about financial freedom, sometimes that looks like a big goal and far, far away. And I, if you scale back, it always comes down to like one-on-one finance, mm -hmm. right? So let's start with income and expense. And to be honest with you, I always had a, a struggle tracking my monthly expenses. Not that I go like full force and have, you know, outrageous expenses, but I didn't find anything that I could really track. I tried Mint as an app, mm -hmm. but it didn't, I just like, oh God, it, it's just getting a little bit complicated. And I, I came across a couple of books from um, Dave Ramsey and he has an app called Every Dollar. And it's the first time that I really liked it. And it, it fits, it fits my, my style, my goals. Basically, what he says is that every, you got to tell every dollar what it should do in the month. So at the end of the day, you have zero, meaning you plan to spend that money and where you have like the categories and at the end your planning and your expenses should equal zero meaning you have charities you have savings you have investments you have your ongoing monthly bills so you know where everything is going and one thing that it was different from the other ones is like you can make a budget that fits all the months you just can't so he, he encouraged us to make a monthly budget and be very aware of this. So I really recommend this app for you guys. The first version is free. And then if you want a little bit more complicated, complicated in terms of, you know, you got to pay for a couple of things, a couple of services so you can have automation included. Um, so I really recommend you guys check it out. It's, it's been very helpful for me to track my expenses to see, mm. okay, this month for restaurant, for eating out, I have, I spend this much. That was my budget. And I have X amount left. It's been very helpful. And that is, I think that that's where things start in your financial journey. Very cool. Um, it starts with one-on-one. -on -one, and that's very cool. tips. I love that. I love that. And I'll put that app link in the, uh, the show notes, but yeah, just getting, you know, moving towards that big goal starts with small steps, right? And all, all of us can incorporate that. So I love that. Very cool. Um, so very cool. Um, Sonia, without further ado, we're going to jump into you and your story and just your path and everyone has a unique path. So we always like to ask the women that we interview, what propelled you to get involved in real estate investing? I have, always been involved since my early 20s without really knowing why um, I ended up jumping buying an apartment complex with a family member. I had no idea what I was doing, needless <laughs> to say, but it sounded like this great idea. I'm going to buy this apartment complex and I'm going to get some cash flow. Obviously, I didn't know that's what it would be called then, but um, so I've always had some sort of a calling. Um, through my journey, then getting married, uh, my ex-husband at the moment uh, did a flip. He got hooked and I jumped on it immediately. It was like, it's calling me back. Here I go again. Um, we did it successfully. Uh, we flipped a, about, I would say, eight to 12 homes. We had a rental portfolio. He did all the work. Uh, he had somebody that he worked with and found the homes. And then I jumped in. I helped pick the colors. I helped pick out anything that needed to get done. I managed the money part because I was working at a bank at that point. So I understood how to, I guess, invest without your own money. And I wasn't even thinking that it was that way when we were doing it, if that makes any sense. Um, then, of course, things um, come to full fruition. I have kids and 
you know, I'm a full-time mom, I'm working as a full-time, he's working as a full-time, so we kind of cooled it down a little bit, and then I had this calling, I had this calling, and it's funny because um, I was in Brazil for the World Cup, and we met a gentleman who said to us, you know, you guys should do it, but build a business around it do it and do it successfully. This is how I've been traveling the world. Um, and I said, that's great. I, I'm in it. And um, he said, no, I don't want to do it anymore. So right there and then I knew what my path was going to be. I knew what I wanted to do, but I wasn't getting the support. So long story short, uh, went through a divorce and I'm back at it. I love it. I'm learning, making mistakes, enjoying the moment, uh, and I wouldn't want to have it any other way. So I could say that it, it, for some reason it was always in my calling somehow. It always came back around. Yes, yeah, Sonia, and you know, in reading your you know your bio and your path, it it was not an easy transition. Like you're 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 being very humble right now. Like, and I got back in it, <laughs> but it didn't actually look like that, right? No, um, not at all. You mentioned that when you you had a business with your with your husband, you you get this calling, this this further kind of aha in Brazil. Decide to keep going. He decides to he's done, um, and then you end up going through a divorce. Um, you mentioned that when that happened, you lost about 70% of your household income, right? That's, Indeed. That's a lot, right? That's not it like is. a few, few bucks. So it that's is. a big deal. And that that's, you know, we talk about grief a lot. Well, not a lot lately. It seems like we have. But, but in terms of like losing, losing different things. And so then walk us through that process of, of your household income going down by that, that amount. You still wanting to take, obviously invest in real estate, you have little ones or children, I don't know what their ages were, but you have kids regardless of their age. And then you're going mourning this, this loss, right? Um, financial and emotional, I'm, I'm sure, and mental and all the other things. So just walk us through, I'm sure it's a very like, you know, I don't know what that looks like for you, but what was that? What was that for you? And how did you propel yourself? What was that next step? And then now you're, you know, moving and shaking with flips and rentals again, but that couldn't have been just overnight. It was not. And it's been a very humbling experience. I think for anybody that has ever been through a divorce, mentally, it breaks you down. Financially, it will break you down one way or another. You have two incomes, all of a sudden, it's just one income. It's reality. The expenses normally don't just necessarily go away. Gradually, you start making changes, but it is very challenging. For me, particularly at that point, I mean, I, I lost my entire rental portfolio. We had about eight homes, so it all went away. The only thing I got to keep was my home. So in doing so, I knew I could get a credit line. I knew I had built-in equity because that's what we did. We bought four closed homes. We fixed them up. Some of them we sold. Some of them we lived in, and some of them became rentals. So I knew I had a cushion right there, and then but mentally, I was not ready. It took me almost two years after my divorce because I work in sales, so it's commission-driven, right? Um, mentally, you're not making the right changes. You have little ones, you have a household, you have you know, your work, you have family members. It drains you. I honestly went out, and just like anybody else, um, I went to get some help. Um, for the first time went through, Hey, I actually need some help. I need some guidance because I've had the backing uh, of financial knowledge to a certain degree. I worked at a bank. I knew how it worked. I just needed to get my mental um, stage obviously in place. After that two years forward, I get my home equity line. I had, you know, hundred thousand dollars and I jumped full board and buying a house and, and converting it to a flip. Now, it wasn't easy. I made zero dollars. <laughs> I broke even. Um, things had changed. I hadn't done it for a while. The market was booming. It, the, pr the prices on the homes were not what it used to be. The labor was not what it used to be. Everything had changed. But I said, okay, well, I didn't make any money on this one. We're going to go into the next one. And sure enough, 
you know, went into my second one and my third and my fourth and my fifth. I've made money. Um, I've lost money and then I have broke even. You really have to, I think for anybody who's been through this experience is first, you've got to help yourself. And as a mom, we are used to always, like they say on the airplanes, put the mask on everyone else and you're the last one. And in situations like this, you gotta put the mask on first before you can help everybody else around you. And um, I preach it, Uh, I'm still learning to do that because it's not easy. But then one person led me to another. My, My banker whom I've done business with for 10 years led me to an appraiser who was a real estate investor. He led me to an agent who was also a real estate investor. And all these people are still in my life. These are people that I do business with, that I work with. It helped, but I had to start from scratch. So easy, no, it's not easy. Nobody ever said it did, but mentally, and I've said this to my girls, they're 14, Frida's 14 and Sophia's nine. We're gonna go through tough times, but I'm doing this all for you. We are going to learn. We're going to overcome it. I want you both to be financial independent uh, before your mom is. And I want to make sure that you guys do much better than I, that I have done up to this point. So I've given myself a 10 year goal um, and I'm willing to work really hard at it. I work really hard at it and I'm not giving up. Wow. Love and learn. Well, where do I start? Right. Because I can dissect this in so many different ways. And where I'm going to start is that we have very similar stories. And I am 100% sure that other women that are listening can totally relate to your journey. Actually, in fact, this morning I was answering uh, one of our members on our Facebook community. We were talking about uh, what it takes to succeed. And one of them was sharing like that she's really struggling because she's a single mom and having, you know, to deal with her full-time job and rentals and rehabs and you can call, right? I think that for the single moms, there is another layer that goes on our shoulders every single day that we carry with, with us. And sometimes it's different, it's different types of partnerships. You, you can have different types of partnerships, but the mom and the dad part is on our shoulders at the end of the day. If you have a supportive ex-husband and, and uh, father figure, that's good. But there is a, a layer that you can transfer the worry part and all of that. And that really drains in a daily basis. And why are we talking about it? You might be saying, what the hell? This is for real estate. Why are we talking about it? We're talking about it because we don't talk about it in so many other places. And women that are going through this don't have the answers. They don't have the answers. And I do believe, Sonia, that you hit on the first step for all those women that are going through this is really put the mask on yourself first. Without that, we can get out of the survival mode and go to striving mode. My survival mode was very similar to yours. Two years of survival, mentally survival, rearranging finances and everything else. It, it, for me was two years. Expectations, I want it to be done in a couple of months, right? That's not the journey. So I think that you're touching on this survival mode and then striving mode. So I wanna talk about the striving mode right now because you're rock and rolling and you're doing amazing things. What do you think for you, you mentioned a couple of partnerships. Besides the partnerships, what do you think that really helped you to get back and play the game in a different way? Well, as you would say in Mexico, si se puede. There okay. is a way for sure. And when there's a will, there's a way. And I've always been like that. I just know that if I want something, it's a matter of time. I'm going to get it. It might take me a month. It might take me two years. 
but I will get it. So you can say determination. Determination. When you hit a point like that in your life, and this can be a, any single parent, okay? I come from really hardworking uh, people. I do not come from family who are financially set, okay? They're hard workers. Um, I have relatives who lost an arm, cut their face. They're in hard work. So life is reality. Whether you have a divorce, which, oh, by the way, it's up, right? We know this. That the, I mean, it's scary, but the numbers are out there. It's not a matter of, I hate to say, oh, this is not going to happen to me. It very well can. But also just life. You're walking down, somebody hits you, and you can't walk anymore, or you lost an arm, or whatever. What are you going to do at that particular point? So I think it's really saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Here's my reasons why. And I think for anybody that is listening, my, I want my difficult path to inspire others. It can be done. It takes time. Help yourself first and figure out what is it that you want because we need to help our kids. Our kids are looking at us daily and saying, good or bad, they're going to become us. So make sure that what you're doing in your goals in life, it doesn't have to be, oh my gosh, I'm going to be a real estate investor and you know I want $100,000 income. It may just be having another property that helps you pay your rent. It can really provide some financial assistance. And when you become a single parent, I know men, I know a lot more females, you will need that extra income because you lost one. It's reality. And as I said, life will hit you. I mean, we've heard we have loved ones that have, you know, for whatever reason, lost their significant other. Life happens. And yeah. all of a sudden, you're faced with this change that, oh my gosh, I've lost this additional income. Um, I'll tell a quick, a quick story. When I was 20 years old, I walk into my insurance agent um, office and I said, I need a life policy. And he's like, are you trying to commit suicide? I said, no, I just know I need it. But that's the environment I've seen. I grew up around very hardworking people, but very hardworking people are in dangerous jobs. You know, mm. they're on the roofs, they're in construction, mm -hmm. they're at packing plants. They are in jobs where life can drastically change their situation than somebody else's. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's really powerful, Sonia. And I mean, your path is very inspiring on a lot of levels. And you. so you, you, you do that first deal, right? You break even, like you said. Uh, you get the you get the equity home equity loan um, line of credit, excuse me. And so, walk us through then. How did you focus on flipping? How did you? Because you also have a full time job, right? You're you're getting all of your life back in order. How did you? You know, how did you choose flipping for you? And how did you do that when you had a full time job, single mom, dealing with you what you were dealing with? And just walk us through that piece. I knew in flipping, there's money but I also know it's a numbers game. You can make additional income really quickly and that kind of helps you set the tone for whatever else you want to do. I had met an acquaintance who had just moved in town, general contractor and say, hey, why don't we partner up on this one? Why don't we, you know, whatever profit we gain, we split it, you know, let's figure this out. I had taken the, I had read every book that you can think of from uh, Mr. Kiyosaki, of course. Uh, I started with Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I grabbed any book that had anything to do with him or his wife. I was searching on Google. I was searching everything. Eventually, I came across Bigger Pockets, where I heard Andressa being interviewed. And I was searching. I was searching. I was so desperate to learn. I was so desperate to get back into it. Um, I, you know, I get up early in the morning. I would check out the internet, see what I can find, um, take care of my kids. During my breaks, I'd be searching or doing research and studying. If I'm 
if I'm in the car, I'm listening to an audio, I'm listening to a book, I make sure that there any amount of time that I had available, I was learning. I had to teach myself again. I had that discipline. Um, I'm also fortunate enough that my parents assist me with my girls. So they live with me. They help out a lot, obviously. But I make sure that Everything that I had was going to go into this because this is what I wanted to do. So it sacrifices. It sacrifices. The only, you know, whether, hey, I'm going to go out with my friends. Well, maybe I don't go out with my friends. Maybe I'm just going to stay and study. It's really surrounding yourself with a lot of information so that you can start and, you know, hopefully do it on the right track. And Sonia, how'd you get the deal flow going though, in terms of like finding, finding opportunity, you're working full time, like anytime on your breaks, did you start to, um, you know, network in the community? Did you find some potential partners and just, how did you able to do it all, if you will, with, with, you know, the time constraints you had? Through my banker that I known and her leading me to obviously at that point, um, an appraiser here in town and him leading me to the real estate agent who was also an investor, that really helped. Um, I was on Zillow. I was on every website you can think of. I was searching bigger pockets. I was searching it all. At the end of the day, my second home came through my banker. She had a rental she wanted to get rid of. And she did, we did owner financing. Uh, for a short time period while I was able to get the house up in order. I was going to sell it, did the numbers and realized that I had overspent, which is typical. There was more than I thought there was. So I decided to keep it as a rental. Um, I have it as a rental. Uh, I have great tenants. Um, the house does, I know the house doesn't need any fixing because I fixed everything. So in the next 12 years, I'm good. There's nothing to do there. So from there, obviously, as I started finding out about the meetups and I started attending the meetups, introducing myself, I know a couple of, uh, of folks that do wholesaling in town. So I just network, network and network. Summarizing what you're doing is, again, one on one, really telling people that, you know, the people that you already work with, right. just telling them what you are up to and then getting the connections f from there. I think sometimes we make things a little bit more complicated than what they should. We overthink. So if you go back to one-on-one, right? First, make a list of all the people that you already do business with and then share with them what are you up to. And ask them, is there anybody else that I should know or I should talk to? And would you be kind enough to connect me with this person? It's just that. That is just a big, big step out there. Because sometimes people don't know what you're up to. And things change. I got a call yesterday. Um, somebody updated, a wholesaler here updating his uh, buyer's list. And he's like, I have you here. Um, you're still looking for a single family. I was like, ah, uh, yes and no. I won't pass a good deal. But right now, what I'm focusing on are, is land and multifamilies and larger deals. He's like, oh, good to know because it was not on my list. So make sure you talk to the wholesalers that you did business before and either confirm you still are in their list or update them. So Sonia, moving forward, where, where is your business going and where are you heading to right now? So I decided that I am probably going to hold on on flipping. Why? Because the houses are really expensive. The good deals are hard to come by. I've also learned that, um, if you do the burst strategy, again, talked about on bigger pockets, it just makes a lot more sense. So I'm shifting to the burst strategy. And I've also started to do my um, own wholesaling for my own, for nothing more than my own. I ended up getting my best friend and saying, hey, what about if you write some letters, you send them out and I don't have the money to pay you, but I'll fix your house within time. How's that? And she's like, great. That works for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> so I've, I've started to switch on that. I'm not opposed to doing a flip. What I will say to people is what we all know. It is very stressful. It is very time consuming. And just juggling the balls between home, my full-time job, and this I realize that doing bird just makes so much more sense. It's taking a certain percentage of the stress out. And to me, that's valuable as well. And when you made that transition, because I think it's a common story, Sonia, for, for a lot of women transitioning, right? They're pivoting. They might be doing wholesaling, but they want to start holding on to some of these deals um, because that's why we all get into this business, right? It's not just to work harder. It's actually to create Last, lasting well for ourselves and for our families, quite honestly. That's why most people uh, are in real estate, not just to have another job. That's really not most people's thoughts there. So for you, you know, did you then go back to some of your key contacts and just say, hey, this is the strategy I'm looking for, or this is the strategy I'm kind of implementing. I'm going to kind of stop here. And because the bird strategy in essence and flipping are so, they're, they're different yet, the skill set and really it, it's so aligned. You know, it's not like, it's not like you're going from multifamily to um, the stock exchange, right? I mean, that's, that's a little different, right? Two different investment classes, but that's a pivot, you know, and, and there's so much that you can use in, in, in really just adding value and then holding on to it. It's really just the end goal. I mean, maybe you don't make as many, you know, you don't put granite in, you're doing something different. Obviously, there's, there's, a, there's a strategy there. So did you go back to your network? Did you, um, what did you do to set yourself up for success? Because that could be scary for women. That could be scary for transitioning. You're like, ah, I got confidence here. I'm talking, I was talking to one of our leaders the other week and she's amazing with lease options. And she's amazing at it, but she knows that's not going to get her to her long time, her long term goals. And she said she was sharing some other things that she's thinking about. And I said, "That's a that's a shift, you know." And that go for you. Hey, I'm not gonna, I'm never gonna squash people's goals and dreams. But it wasn't like a pivot. It was like a whoa, this is really different, right? Because we all, if you're wholesaling, you're flipping, you're doing things well. Let's bring those into something different or something new. So that's my question to you: Is what did you? How did you transition successfully? You know, what did you do to set yourself up for success? I think one of the things, my context didn't change. You just have to tell yeah. them, I'm, you know, my, my program is changing a little bit. And, you know, just as Andressa said, make sure you say that. Make sure you're informing others of kind of what you're planning on doing. Me seeking out my own deals is just for my purposes. I'm not going to be selling you know, wholesale deals to other people unless I came, you know, through a lot of them. Those are just for me. It's just another avenue that I am able to achieve. I also think is not only letting everybody know, but figuring out what are the steps that you need to do. If you know how to do flips, you can do burr. And I think the only reason, at least for me, the reason yeah. why I got into flipping, A, I had done it before. We've done it very successfully. It's a way to create money, but you quickly realize, yeah, you want to create money, but we want to create wealth. We want to be able to, to be financially independent. And you're, I don't think you can really do that through just flipping. So I think most of us at some point started doing that. W would I do another one if the numbers make sense? Yes. But I want to buy and hold because my goals are to build wealth so I can become financially independent, not only me, but my kids as well. Yeah. And in yeah. essence, you're, the, the, the flipping, what's so fascinating is you're adding value. <laughs> That's really what you're doing with the, 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 the Burr strategy, so to speak. It's just the classic adding value, just holding on to it and maybe, maybe not doing right as, as high end if you're, in, if you're doing high end flips, if that was your strategy. Um, or you may be, depending on the clientele. Um, no, that's very cool. And that's, so, so how, so where are you with that? Um, have you been able to get, you know, to move on that a little bit in terms of securing a deal? Yes, indeed. So I actually ended up securing a home in December. I was my first, um, wholesale deal. You can say, um, it's become quite the challenge, uh, it, it, but it's been fun. Um, it's a home where, um, Two 90 year olds lived for 49 years. Wow. Now, I had just downsized my home and I knew the stress levels that were involved in it. So I came to them and I said, I'm in a hurry. 
It's whatever makes sense to you. If you want to move now, if you want to move later, take with you whatever you want and leave whatever you want. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to have a state sale because I have a few <laughs> thousand dollars sitting there. And my 14 year old is excited because she's going to go on Amazon and eBay and sell some of this stuff. And whatever <laughs> we make out of those belongings is going to be college tuition money put away. All right. Like um, now, mind you, I've been on three weeks of cleanup. <laughs> We verbally accepted the deal on September 29th. And the reason why I know September 29th, that's because that's when my second child was born. <laughs> uh, we shook hands and he said, I'm a man of my word. And I said, well, I'm a woman of my word too. They officially didn't move until December and we closed on December 20th. So wow. it's been cleaning, cleaning and cleaning. I am actually also negotiating a couple of different duplexes. Um, that I'm very excited. Uh, again, Bert, uh, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to increase the value of these properties. I am doing short-term owner financing. They're allowing me to fix or do whatever work I need to before I go to the bank. This way, I don't have to put the entire down payment out of my pocket. It will be sitting in value at these properties. That's awesome. And I just want to clarify for those of you that are listening to uh, Sonia talking about the strategy called bird and you never heard it like, what is this? The bird or <laughs> bird? Or bur what the hell is that? Right? So it, the acronym is for buying, rehab, refinance, and repeat. repeat. Uh, did I miss any R? And so many R's. Rent. rent and repeat and rent, refinance and repeat. So buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. So that's what she's talking about. I've done that before too, and I totally agree that is a great strategy to build wealth. My main thing with Burr, when you're buying, you can always burr a, a property if you do it right, right? So if you buy it right, the rehab is very important. I always hit on the same point. You gotta know your exit strategy. You got to know, otherwise your rehab numbers are going to change drastically. You don't use the same hardwood floors in a home that you're looking to sell, that you are a uh, house you're looking to rent, right? You got to think about like wear and tear and different finishes and different things that you got to put that it's, it's a little bit different and it will affect your rehab cost. So I always think in consideration, we're going to put a link on our show notes for the book uh, where it explains exactly what, what each phase it is. And if you have any questions, just shoot us uh, a message on our Facebook community and we're going to be more than happy to answer you. So Sonia, talking about construction and you went, you said that you made money, you lost money and broke even, right? Right. That's reality. We always see on Facebook and other Instagram, like the checks and how much they made and yada, yada. But we all know that sometimes we break even and that's a blessing. Yes. Right. We want to get ready of that house. Maybe there was some voodoo or something there because it seems that some of the rehabs, it's just like one thing after another. Right. You're just like, oh gosh, let me do my best here. Have a safe and quality product and let that go. So what do you think for the ladies that are listening? They're like, oh my gosh, I can't afford to break even. Break even, it's going to be a blessing, but I can't afford to lose money. So what would you say they should think about now before they go in to Avoid as much as possible, of course, losing money on a deal. Okay, first of all, I do want to refer that Brian Green from Bigger Pockets is the one that wrote the book Dumber. It's out there. Um, so I just want to give David, a shout out. David Green. David Green, sorry. Yes, yes. no worries. Um, and he makes it sound so simple. Um, like you said, everything's about the numbers whether you're flipping, whether you're renting, whether you're doing the burst strategy, whatever you do, it's all about the numbers. 
Um, he explains it extremely well, and there's a number of topics that can be found for all the ladies that are interested in it. I guess to answer your question, um, none of us get up in the morning and say, I'm ready to lose money. I'm ready <laughs> yeah, right? to lose $20,000 today. <laughs> none of us. Not when you're a single parent. Not when you're married. It doesn't matter. I don't care if you're poor or you're wealthy. Nobody wants to but it's reality and be ready for it. Um, I will say this. If you're not ready to lose, don't, don't do flips. Don't do, don't, don't do them because they're great learning lessons. They're painful lessons. Okay. I lost money on two deals because two general contractors basically in so many words, you know, didn't do work right. They screw me, but that's okay. Sonia's karma is going to get them down the road. Um, it, it's reality. It's going to happen. It, it, if your numbers are off a little bit, okay, from the moment you buy it, whether it's a burr, whether you're doing a flip, from the moment you buy it, if you buy it wrong, it, it, it's hard. It's hard to recoup. So if you do go into it and you know that I may lose money, Okay, get yourself knowledge, partner up with somebody who's already doing it, you know, provide assistance, say, hey, what can I do for you? How can we do this? So that you can learn, but even the experts, sometimes flips go around and you will lose money. So I guess I'll say be ready, be ready. And when it happens, you can cry and you can throw a tantrum and you can do all you want and then get up and do it again. <laughs> what um, specifics, Sonia, what, what specific spreadsheets or tools did you use? Because I think, I think one of the biggest challenges, especially as you're navigating you know, projects, whether you're expanding or whether you're getting into some new projects, we underestimate costs. I mean, we all can do that. You know, when we got into a larger multifamily, our first larger multifamily, we underestimated um, the timeline and we underestimated certain costs because now you're not dealing with you know, a uh, duplex, you're dealing with, you know, 50 units, right? So it, it, it's a shift. It's a bit, it was a big shift. So for you, did you use a different spreadsheet? Did you, did you, you know, did you run it by people? Hey, these are my numbers that I'm evaluating this, this value add deal. What do you think? I mean, what, what did you do? And I know you're right. We are going to, you know, win, lose and all everything in between. But I think analyzing the numbers will help minimize those, those losses. You know, you can't control contractors. I wish we could, <laughs> but you can't. But what you can control at least is your numbers and making the right financial calls. So did you use some, you know, a different spreadsheet? Did you create one? Did you use like a, you know, I was just curious what you did for that because we get that question a lot from, uh, from women. Bigger pockets. Calculators. They have all the spreadsheets that you need. You just plug in the numbers. Yeah, the now, calculators are really good. Yeah, yes, absolutely. It, it will give you a realistic picture. Um, they also have books on what the costs are out there on an average. I mean, there is so much information out there. I know for me initially was a struggle because I, I didn't know where to go. And I'm sure there's a lot of individuals, okay? I'm not saying you can't do your own spreadsheet. But if somebody has it figured out and it works and it's successful, why bother? So I go to bigger pockets. I use the spreadsheets. There is one for rental. There's one for flips. There's one if you want to do the bird strategy. There's a number of tools involved in there. Now, at the end of the day, do I still go to people and say, hey, would you mind looking at this? Yes. These are my close group of people, first of all, now I finally found a general contractor that I feel is great and I'm doing good work with him. Um, my also friend, business partner, uh, my realtor, whom we go back and, and we throw ideas and we throw numbers. Don't just verify him once, verify him twice, verify him three times, verify him four times. Look, I'm still making mistakes and I will make mistakes. But the whole point is that you, over time, you're going to make them a lot less mm -hmm. or they're not going to be as costly. Yeah. Or you're going to make new mistakes because you're, you're entering a whole new, you know, phase of your business, right? So no, that's great though. I think, I think what you're saying is wonderful because you really can 
utilize, and I always like to say too, if people are transitioning from one strategy to another, like go with the low hanging fruit, right? Because in other words, like what's going to be an easy shift that's going to take less time and less money for you to do to achieve your goals versus going from here to a whole other venue that's like a whole new skill set, a whole new this, a whole new contact base. You can do that. It's going to take more time and it's probably going to take more money. So you have to assess, right? We're all ass- assessing that. I have those conversations with my husband all the time, like a new project pops up and say, I always say like, okay, how much time and energy is this going to take? Is this the right thing to do now? Okay. I mean, what, what's, a, what's another way we can approach this versus, you know, a complete 360 shift? It's, it's a shift, right? You didn't do a 360. You did a pivot. And that, you know, you were able to use your contacts, your, what you knew of flips, which was so, you're just holding on to it now, right? You're just holding on to it, which is going to build well. So such a nice segue. Um, Sonia, where can the ladies listening learn more about you? Um, we, you know, have to have you back on because there's probably tons of other things to talk about, but you're one of our very valued and, and trusted leaders out there in Nebraska. We're so excited to have you on. Ladies, we will put in the show notes uh, the meetup link to, to join Sonia and her great Nebraska group. Uh, and uh, they meet monthly. You can learn more where, when their next meeting is on the website. I'll put the link in there. But where can the ladies learn more about you and what you're up to? So you can find me on Bigger Pockets. You can find me on the Invest Her Meetup Facebook uh, group. You can find me on Instagram. Uh, my nickname, uh, Guera, G-U-E-R-A. That was my nickname from being a little girl. Um, so you can find me there. And I, I'm on all the social media that you can think of. Um, I do want to say that I thank you both because honestly, it's not only providing a place where people can learn, but this is also a culturally mixed group. And I really enjoy that. I must say when I listen to other, I mean, you guys have had ladies from all over the world who are trying to do the same exact thing that you guys have done. I think that's fantastic. It's one way of getting people from different backgrounds, from different you know, ways of doing things to try and do this thing that so many people have been successful in doing here in America. Yeah. And I, I think that you're making such a good point because I'm really tired of going to conferences or hearing from the same perspective, right? Usually is an American white male person, nothing against it, but the perspective, right? If you didn't come from a different country, spoke different languages, went through different things, different race, different gender, different, being different, you might have a different perspective. You do have a different perspective. That's why we're doing this. And interviewing people that come from different background, it just brings a new fresh air, fresh ideas on way of doing things or handling things. And that's what we are all about. Uh, so now we're going to transition to our fabulous three questions. And the first one, Sonia, is what's the most transformational book you have ever read? No shock, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah, right. I was, <laughs> I, I, actually, I had my brother sent it to me. I was at the gym. I had just walked in. It was like five o'clock in the morning. He's like, you need to listen to this. And I just remember having an aha moment like, Oh my gosh, that was, that's what got it started. Now, since then, one of the, bo- one of the books that I have picked up, one of my favorites, I have my 14 year old reading it right now. Um, it's um, The Richest Man from Babylon. And I had been hearing about it, but I'm like, oh, it sounds like an old boring book, easy read, super simple. Hey, if those strategies work then, they work now read it, read it and have your kids read it, please. Nice. I heard of that book once. I didn't read it yet. So it's on my, on my list here that keeps growing. (laughs) It's a piece of cake. It's a piece of cake. You can, I do a lot of audio books. You can go through it really fast and it is, it is really simple, especially for people that are trying to get into real estate or might be new it's a really simple book and it makes a whole lot of sense. And again, I heard it through bigger pockets. So that's another place. 
Exactly. The second question is, what's the most powerful routine that you do to create a financially free and balanced life? I'm always trying to balance life, girls, and you know this. <laughs> uh, when you become a mom, you, you have 20,000 things that you're doing at the same time. However, for me, I need to start working out. I am at the gym at five o'clock in the morning, uh, Monday through Thursday. I work six days a week. I need that. I need to relieve my stress and figure out what I get, what kind of tasks I have. So that's kind of my own time. That's the only time that I'm selfish about. I need to have God in my life uh, to create it a balance, and I need to have my family. And having those three things, um, I feel like, is what gets me through. Awesome. And the last question is: Which woman, famous or not, has inspired you the most? I've had a really tough time with that. And I can <laughs> tell you this, from, from the perspective of being a single parent, um, I, have, I have appreciated a lot more those single parents. So I think for me, I have to give a shout out to them. It doesn't matter if you're a male or, or if you're a female. Um, I have great examples around me. My best friend became a single mom and she went through school, worked a full-time job, was a full-time mom, and she got her bachelor's degree. Um, I know of other women who, again, live through a curveball and became a single mom with six, seven kids. And not only did she become the head of the household, created a business that still to this day, um, their kids live off of. I just think when we are pushed into a difficult situation, it is amazing what we can come up and do. And I think single parenting, it's tough, but some wonderful things can come out of it. So I would say is all those stories really what motivate me that if they did it, I can do it. <laughs> Sonia, thank you so much. I love, uh, love having you on the show today and sharing your, your vulnerability, your insight, just, you know, your authenticity and, uh, and some great tips too, to, to build wealth and, and to, you know, continue on our real estate path. So thank you for being here and thanks for being our, one of our uh, key leaders. We're really excited to uh, eventually meet you as well. <laughs> I am super excited. I, again, I thank you both. I think this is really a place where for everybody, whether you're a new real estate investor, whether you're wanting to learn about it, or even a seasoned investor, you can give a little back. I think that's amazing. And just having the different cultures for me, uh, that's fascinating. So hats off to you both for all the hard work. Thanks so much for being part of our journey and putting yourself out there and contributing to it too. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to receive updates on our next interviews, go to our website, therealestateinvestor.com. There you can subscribe to our show, become part of our investor community and get updates on upcoming episodes. If you like our show, please share it with other women who would benefit. And don't forget to leave us a rating on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And as always, we encourage you to take one action as a result of today's show and put it into motion so you can live both a financially free and balanced life. Thanks for spending time with us. Ciao.